Today is March 10th, 1981. We are talking to Sabin Scherf, capital S-C-H-E-R-F, at their home in Withy. Sabin is going to talk to us about the early days in the area two miles north and three miles west of Withy, where he spent uh, uh, his early boyhood. Okay, Sabin, we'd like to hear some things that you have to say. Our family consists of uh, mother, Lottie, dad, Louis J., Fred, the oldest son, was eight, me, I was six, Emmeline was five, Natalie was three. Floyd was born in 1906 in the woods. In the fall of 1900, Dad went on a land seeker's trip to Withy with some other men. When he came home, he told us he had bought a quarter section of land at $10 per acre from Blackburn and Bass, the, the dealers in, in Withy. So we should start to get ready to move in the spring of 1901. My grandparents on my father's side came from Germany. My grandmother was from Yankee stock, from New York State. And we lived in a small town of Wilmot, 20 miles west of, Chico of Kenosha, in southeastern Wisconsin, where mother was born and raised. And us, all of the children were born, except Floyd. Dad was born in Burlington, Wisconsin, about 10 miles from, from Wilmot. And he moved with, to Wilmot with his folks when he was a small boy. Dad hired Will Buston to work for him the first year when so when spring came, they loaded the freight car with our furniture and horses and so forth, and Buffton came north with the, the drive two days later to get to Withy at about the same time. We arrived in Withy at 8 p.m. on March 18, 1901, real nice warm evening with snow all gone. We, we went to the Moody Hotel to stay. The next morning a big blizzard was on and we couldn't get out of the hotel for five days. Dad rented an old shack east of Whitty to live in that first summer. Our land was a mile and a half west of the old Murray farm, owned by Jens Miller, grandfather of the Jens A. Miller, the cow buyer that we know. Our farm was two miles north of Withy and three miles west. There was no road west from the Murray, from the Miller Corner. The town board was supposed to have laid out the road through the woods to our land. And when Dad and Buffton got to that corner, they couldn't go any further. When the town board finally got around to lay out the road, they had a chop. Top out a trail wide enough for team and wagon to get through for a mile and a half to our land.
The first order of business was to clear a space to roll up a log cabin so we could move out out there. I suppose they planted a small garden too. A log barn large enough for two horses and two cows was next. Bluffton shot two deer for meat. By that time it was getting fall and time for Fred and I to go to school, three miles to Frenchtown, a poor attendance that year. I remember T.H. Barber was our first teacher. I don't remember some of the others out there. A schoolhouse was built on the Miller Corner, later moved to the Munson Corner. The men cut logs and landed them on Black River for five dollars per thousand. And a scaler came along several times during the winter so we could get some eating money. Sawyer's Dam was about 20 miles upriver from our place. After the ice was out, the log drivers would hold the water back at the dam to get a good head of water and then open the gates to, to get high water to float the log. A crew of men called drivers worked along the river to keep the logs from forming the dam in the narrow places and curves. Sometimes the jams would be bad, and the drivers had to use dynamite to break it. In the spring of 1902, we went down to the river to see them drive the logs. So some men on each side of the, of the river. Paul Whitefish lived on Diamond Lake, about five miles northeast of what is now Lublin. Paul was one of the drivers, and the boss told Paul to put on a show. So when the right log came along, he hopped, hopped onto it, really put on a good act. That was the first time I ever saw anyone ride a log. That was about a 30-day drive to take the logs to La Crosse, where the mill was. The men on the drive got somewhat better pay than the regular loggers. Probably about five, probably about ten or fifteen dollars per month above the twenty or twenty-five that the ordinary men got. Bill Caskin and Herman Carroll arrived in Withy that same spring under about the same conditions. Sam Munson and Will Wood came here in 1903. Munson had three boys and two girls. The boys being somewhat older than Fred and I, they were able to help more than we were. Woods had two little boys. Wallace is the only one left of that family. Cut her off. Let her go. For recreation, we were, well, we lived right on Black River. And then, of course, we was always swimming or skating or something going on, skiing. And, uh, of course, we fished and haunted Fred more than I. Seems to me he put it over on me sometimes. And uh, the school picnic in later years was at Munson's Grove on the corner. And uh, 
Roll Cutler's Picnic, uh, I, th I think it started over at uh, the old homestead near where Fred Warren's lives. But it was moved several times and finally ended. The last I knew of it, it was held in at Squirrel Hill on, on part of our land. In 1916, when I became of age, Dad and I went down to vote for president. On the way home, he says, uh, who did you vote for? I said, I voted for Wilson. Huh? He said, they both, might, might as well both stayed home. I voted for Hughes. And, uh, of course, we laughed about it. But I voted for Wilson. He kept us out of war, but he didn't keep us out very long after that. 1918, I was in France, and uh, flu hit pretty hard about the time we were leaving New York. I was doing guard duty the night before we got on the ship. Um, one of my pals came along. We were confined to the company street, and he came along and speak out. And, uh, I said, uh, you got anything on your break? And, oh, he had candy and cigarettes, one thing or another for me. And so I said, pass on, break. And that's all there was about that. And I worked in the woods up at Rhinelander a couple of winters. I didn't like w working the woods very long, very well. The work wasn't so bad, but the nights, when you get all wet, no way of dry, drying your stocks out. And it wasn't so, so nice. And I, I have farmed most of my life. But I have boys. Now the oldest boy didn't. He didn't take much of the farming, but the twins, the youngest ones, they, after they came home from the army, they, they lived in Korea for 13 months. And when they came home, I thought they'd better farm for a little while to kind of settle down. But I could see they didn't like it. So I said, well, you guys don't have to farm just because I did. If you think it's something else you'd rather do, do it. So we sold the cows and, and they're working in a machine shop for International Harvester. That's enough. Thank you very much for participating in our oral history. You are a valuable part of our area history and we want to thank you for sharing your past and your thoughts with us, Saban.